burly Russian dudes in leather jackets come like running up to me, like start grabbing all my shit. And I don't know if I'm getting kidnapped or rescued. Like I can't, I can't tell. And this is my favorite Russian story. And it's not like, you know, you guys talk about the every day to day stuff, right? Um, so in Minsk, there was an import player, Kevin Lalonde, goalie. And he's got this like decent apartment, but he's paying like fucking almost 4000 a month, which is a lot there. And he's paying it in cash to the landlord. You know, and the landlord, the first month he paid, the landlord came over. We met him. He came with his wife. Nice couple. And, uh, you know, a few months go by. And as the season's going by, Kevin's all got, all of a sudden got this thing going on where he thinks there's a ghost in his apartment. He's like, dude, there's a fucking ghost in my apartment, right? And I'm like, we're laughing about well, it. Whoever says that you don't believe. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Dude, yeah. He's just know. like, there's things being moved. And there's like this. And I'm like, well, dude, we are in fucking Belarus, whatever. Yeah. So January comes around. We go on this road trip. And uh, we went to like Finland and Prague had a team. And then we were going into Russia and Kevin forgot his Canadian passport. So like two days into this trip, he's like, fuck, I can't go to the, in, into Russia. So the team had to fly him back. So he comes back and he gets in at like 2 a.m. In, in Minsk. And he's only got, he's got to get back on a flight in like four hours. So he gets to his apartment and he puts the key in and he's going to open the door and it won't open. And he's like, fuck, am I at the right? He's like, yeah, I'm at the 23. And he hears a dog. And he's like, what the fuck? So, and then he realizes his door is like bolted from the inside. He's like, what the fuck? So he starts pounding on this thing. Somebody's in there. Dude, the door opens and this guy opens the door and he's got like, he's in his boxers, no shirt on. It's the fucking landlord. The, swear to, swear to, the land, I swear when to God. he was gone, he, he would. he was gone, he would move the family back in. <laughs> <laughs> swear to God, he was charging this guy like four grand a month, and then we would go on these ten day road trips, and he would move his. F- Kevin said he came in, the, the kids sleeping on the couch. This guy's there, the wife's in his bed. They got the family pictures yeah, yeah, up. Swear to God, uh, swear to so, God. So what did he do? He said it. He nothing. Just, eventually, that stopped. But he said at the time, he's like, I couldn't process what was going on, so I, I was just like, we got to talk about this later. I need to get like three hours of sleep. So he's like, I'm walking to my room, and the guy's like, Kevin, can you use a spare bedroom? Like, my wife's my wife's in there. <laughs> and then the best part about it was that Kevin was like. Every month, they always asked me about a cleaning lady, and it was always right before we went on the road. So they were also charging him. They to wanted get, it clean, yeah, too, clean, for when yeah. they went in. <laughs> no, oh. for after. For after. So oh. they would stay there and then get it clean, and Kevin had to pay for it all. Oh, fucking double but bubble. That's incredible. That? Well, I wanted to talk a little bit, yes. a little bit about our owner. So Billy Nagak, who's, he's, uh, he's the best guy in the world, multi-billionaire. With like, a B. Multi. Like over 10, I guess I've heard. So it's funny. I always introduce him to people. I'm like, the Billy Goat? Yeah, I'm like, hey, this is Billy, short for billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, he's the best. And um, he would, uh, he, he, so this is how rich he is. Like, I'm going to tell you two stories of how rich this guy is. So I met him for drinks and we we're losing at the time. So he wanted to know what was going on with the team. Anyways, he comes there and this time it's one on one. And, but there's this guy kind of behind him. And he doesn't introduce him, so I'm kind of like weirded out. Like, who the hell is this guy? Whatever. We sit down. We're sitting across from each other. This guy's like sitting like a little bit behind him, and uh, Billy takes a sip of his wine and like he gets like a little dribble on his chin, and this guy reaches over with a napkin and starts like patting his lips. I'm like, oh my god, he has a fucking personal butler. I'm like, holy shit. And uh, before the meal, he like. The, the butler t- takes out his pills and like starts feeding him his pills, gives him his water. Billy's sitting there with his like his hands down, like that. As he's just, getting like fed. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, like I'm not used to hanging out with people like that, you know. And uh, the other story about Billy and how fucking rich he is. Um, he has. So I met one of his pilots this year. I was over in Sweden, and he was telling me uh, he's got like two huge private. He got one private jet that's like a 200 seater. He's got a 20. Um, cedar jet that he uses regularly 200 cedar yeah like part. something stupid so he owns like a, like his own 747 yeah exactly like, like i don't know planes but yeah, yeah 747 and then he's got like some crazy um 300 foot or like yeah 300 foot yacht in the south of france blah blah, blah which i better be going on soon <laughs> but <laughs> billy so he tells me he's like and he smokes cigarettes while he's flying so he's on his jet and every two months, he gets his whole carpet changed and all the um, upholstery because he spits on the floor. <laughs> so how much does that cost to like change every two months? That you know you're living when you're doing shit like that. At Fly JFK, they told me like bring all your own equipment, like whatever you want, because it's tough to get stuff. Like people, like Yabo told me that, like whatever you want to use, like just bring it and yeah. turn in the receipts. So I buy my sticks for the whole year, like forty one pieces or whatever it is, and. 
like show up and they just vanished. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Someone's grabbing. Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody airport. like laughed when they saw him come through. I get like f- as soon as I get out of the door from like the baggage claim, this guys come like burly Russian dudes in leather jackets come like running up to me, like start grabbing all my shit. And I don't know if I'm getting kidnapped or rescued. Like I can't, I can't tell. Bodyguards, leather jackets, like guns. Like these kids, these guys have like guns holstered. And I'm like, oh, we're really doing this. <laughs> so they all grab my shit. We go, we go outside. I, I'm not carrying anything. Like everyone's getting getting carried for me. We get in a full motorcade, like three black SUVs, driving away from the airport. And I've heard, like, the owner of this team rumors that he was like I don't, mafia. I yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, call it what you want to call it. I mean, just yeah. he was there was there was always rumors that the owner of VTS was very. The connected. chances yeah. of this guy this not having has. told someone else to kill someone <laughs> is very low. Let's yeah. just put it that way. I don't know. Right? Is that a that's fair, a good way to put it? I mean, hey, listen, he might be the one percent. He's probably put a hit out on somebody Something. somewhere. Maybe I have no idea. Maybe, he's True, a fan. but put it this way: people fear this guy, and he's like pinned up against the glass. And I'm thinking, like, who's this guy? He turned like turns around wearing. Up tr- he's pro- no bigger than his son. He's maybe five seven, like skinny. If he's one hundred and fifty pounds, that'd be a lot. A Toronto Maple Leafs baseball hat on, pulled down over his eyes, and a triple XL hoodie that says Thug Life. Yeah. So we do a shot at one point, and he's like, you know, he finishes it, and he just turns around and fires the shot glass off the wall behind me. So then we do another one, and he does the same thing, fires the shot glass off the off the fucking wall. Uh, yelling Russian or no? Just he's not even. Ye- he's not mad. Okay. He's just like. Okay. He's just like. Dink. <laughs> and every time he does it, a girl comes out of the back with a broom and sweeps it up every single time. And he keeps doing this over and over. So we, yeah, it, it's, it gets better and better. My agent got a contract <laughs> offer from Vladivostok. So I don't even look where it is. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Just sign it. I'm like, where is Vladivostok? <laughs> I've never heard of this place before. It. So it's like it's 60 miles from North Korea on the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like... Our travel was, we'd play four games at home, four on the road, four games at home, four on the road. Minimum travel time to start the road trip with a 10-hour flight. <laughs> it was insane. It was like putting like a, it'd be like putting a, an NHL team in like Frankfurt, Germany and having them play in the Western Conference. I'm it looking at it on the map now. Oh, yeah. You're out there. You're out, out there. there. You're in the bottom out. of Russia. Yeah. It must have been warm.